Hey, it's Tim here. Today, I'm going to be touching on a set of functions that I don't think are used enough. These are actually the user functions. Essentially, the user functions allow you to check whether the current user has certain attributes that are acquired from Tableau Server or Tableau Online. Uh, let's get stuck in and then maybe you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. I'm going to go ahead and connect to Sample Superstore Sales, the standard data source of Tableau. <laughs> Every single demo uses this data source. Um, and um, what you can see here is just a standard view. And I'm not actually going to build anything. I'm just going to start off with this very simple view because I actually want to show you these functions uh, up front. The other thing I want to just call out is that um, there's a little section at the very bottom right, if you just see here, it actually has my name. And actually, a lot of people think that this is simply uh, just you know, Tableau being aware of who they are and just logging in. But not many people actually think to do this, which is to click on this little drop down and see that you can actually simulate usage of your dashboard given specific users. Now, you can see that I'm on here twice. That's essentially because I'm connected to my dev instance. So this Tim Nguyen here at the top is actually uh, my uh, viewer sort of instance of myself using my personal email. And the second one is my sort of server admin instance of myself using a slightly more sort of high level access to the whole entire Tableau online site. You can also see that I've got two groups, one called a new group, which I literally just created, and another one called Data Rockstar. Okay, so there's only two people here, and then they've also uh, got this group here called All Users. So essentially, um, it shows you some of the information that you can actually get from Tableau Online. Let me show you where this actually comes from. So let's go back to Tableau Online, and you'll see that this is my Tableau Online instance. If I just go down here to the left-hand side, if you're wondering where I am, I've just gone over here to Groups, and if I click on the Groups section here, you'll see that I have those same groups. So these groups are being dynamically pulled by Tableau Desktop into the Tableau Desktop environment, and then it's able to use that as context for my visualizations, okay? So this is something that you can sort of cleverly use because the fact that you can check if someone is part of a group means you can actually use this to do things like conditional calculations depending on which group someone is part of. So let's just dig into some of these functions. That's what this video is about. So let's go ahead and create a calculated field um, and we can just start using them. There's sort of no prerequisite. They don't even need you to put anything inside of the calculation window for them to work. I'm just gonna make the text super large so you can see that. And if I go to this little drop down here, you'll see that you get a list of groups that are basically where the functions live. And if you go to the user functions, you'll see that we get these nice uh, sort of, I think how many is it? Six functions here that we can use. And these are all essentially checking information on Tableau Server. So let's try each of them one by one and see what they do. I'm just going to click inside of the calculation window and double click full name. And I'm just going to call this full name. So let's just see what that does. So let's hit apply. And uh, now that I've hit apply, you'll see that it actually creates this uh, calculated field over here. Uh, because of the way this works, it's not actually using anything from the data set. So that's why you'll see that it's actually sort of not part of our orders or returns table. It's actually created in this, I call it sort of the limbo uh, actually <laughs> down here. So everything here that doesn't sort of live uh, as a sort of uh, indent from these other tables essentially is being created in a space that isn't inside of those tables. It's just slightly hard to understand. But if you check out my data model video, I do actually go into that in more detail. So let's drag full name into the view. And you can see that if I drag the full name into view, you can see that the full name is Tim Nguyen. Thank you. So there we go. That's uh, the, the function pretty much in a nutshell. Now, because it's this literary return in this, it means that it applies this almost a bit like a parameter. So if I was to actually get some sort of aggregate values into this view and just drop it in, it essentially just applies this full name to the entire workbook. It's like a parameter that's being dynamically fed by the Tableau server and into that sort of parameter, it's putting your user details, okay? Now, what I can also do is I can also check what domain I'm part of, okay? So let's close this function and I'm just gonna duplicate this because again, I'm super lazy. Uh, if I go to edit and I just type in domain, and we can just highlight this, go back to my user functions and select user domain. You'll see that it replaces that. So you can just see that's all I need to type. This is a valid calculations. You can see that just here. Um, it's saying that it's valid. So I don't need to do anything else for this to sort of work. Okay, so let's, um, Let's just get out of this and just hit apply. And you can see the user domain has been created. So it's uh, sort of over there. And I, if I drag that into the view, you'll put that in front and you'll see the domain is external. And this is because essentially I'm not actually on Tableau Online. I'm actually not using a Windows domain in this particular case. That's what this actually is. Now, 
So just to explain this in more detail, in some organizations, um, you can actually create something called a Windows domain. And the domain basically just explains to um, infrastructure and technology what part of the business you work in. So a typical example, if you're a global organization, you might be in the EMEA domain. And that means all the technology and infrastructure you use is part of the EMEA infrastructure, okay? This allows IT professionals to essentially put people into different groups for various sort of reasons I won't go into, but that's essentially what it is. And you might actually choose to run certain conditions based on whether someone is part of one domain or another domain. So that's just something to be aware of, if that makes sense. A good example here might be, let's say you have different currencies in different domains and it actually matches up one to one. You could actually use this to do some little currency conversion using some maybe dynamic fields coming from other data sets. Okay? So that's a really sort of nice, nice to have a uh, little feature there. And the other thing I can actually pull out is the username. So let's uh, duplicate this out and let's duplicate this. And then let's edit that again and let's call this username. Now my username and full name are not the same thing. So let's just go ahead and select user and double click username. And again, I'll just make this larger so you can see. Again, you can see this is valid. This is all you need to write. It's very, very simple username. Um, now I can just hit apply. This will of course head over down here to the bottom left hand side. And now if I drag username next to domain, you can see that in this case, my username is actually my email. The reason being, uh, I'm actually using Tableau online. So this is always going to be the case. Now in some organizations, your username might be not your email. It might be just a first name dot last name. It might be whatever sort of structure that's set up for you on Tableau server or Tableau online. But this is really powerful because essentially you can check various details about the user without ever having to you know, do anything. Now, I'm just gonna show you how you can simulate this and make sure that it's actually working. So I'm gonna go ahead and close this little X here and I'm gonna to go to the bottom. And what I said earlier on is that actually this other Tim here is actually using my personal email. So I'm gonna actually have to grade this out so you can't see it. So if I switch to that, you'll see that again, I'm still external, but now you can see that it switched over to my personal email. And if I switch back to my uh, other one, then you can see that this is all good. Okay, so this is a really sort of nice to use feature. Now there are a couple of other things in this little drop down. If I just go in here and I select new group, you'll see that everything gets uh, zoned out. Now, the reason that is, is because essentially I'm behaving like I'm just part of the group. So when you do that, you don't, you're not actually uh, a, an individual. It's basically Tableau is feeding that parameter with variables and saying, actually, this person is just part of this group. We don't know who they are. And so that's why everything disappears when I select that. So don't be worried when when you select a group and everything disappears. The functions we've written so far are just about the individual and therefore that's all you should use them for, essentially pulling the individual information out. You might use this to specifically target, let's say a certain group of people with a specific calculation because you know that's what they do, but that's not really the best way to do things. It's normally better to get the consistent sort of set of uh, behavior across every everyone set up and then you're able to do that. The other thing you can do is you can actually pull this information and customize a dashboard so you could for example put a little message to say welcome tim today's view is uh this and these are the numbers so you can actually build sort of nice structured sentences using these functions inside of tableau so that's the sort of typical use case for these things now the other group of functions are the ones that allow you to check if someone is part of a group so to do this what i'm actually going to need to do is go back into my little sort of window here and i'm going to click on this data rockstar group and i'm just going to go and grab this uh this little name here at the top because what i want to do is actually create the calculated field and check if these two things are the same so now that i've done that let's go back in here and what we can do is we can just go ahead and create a new calculated field i'll go down to this drop down here and i'll go back to my user functions so you can see here that we have two sort of conditional, three conditional functions actually. So is full name, is member of, and is username, okay? So the is member of is the one I'm gonna actually start with, okay? Returns true if the current user is a member of the given group, false otherwise. This uses a Tableau server to resolve group membership. If logged on, otherwise it always returns false. So basically, if it can't connect to the server, it's going to return false, which is important if you're gonna use this for security reasons, okay? But let's go ahead and create uh, uh, something called group name. And in here, I could actually use a parameter for this, but I'm just gonna type data rockstar in there. I'm just gonna make sure it's exactly what was on the server, okay? 
and then that's basically our group name okay so there you can see if i just drag this out you can see that the group name uh, that we just created manually is exactly the same now what i'm going to do is i'm going to switch to the first team because i know that person is not part of this data rockstar group okay i know that because i set this up um i can actually show you that as a matter of fact you can see that the data rockstar is actually my other email it's not my personal email so let's go back in here and let's actually try and do this is member of uh, function so now i'm basically uh you know in this in this group so let's go ahead create a calculated field and i can actually just go and use the function called is is member of okay let's make this larger and i can just call this uh is member of actually it's just a good name is member of okay and what i can do is i can actually then just put group name okay because i created that previously i just wanted to make it nice and easy so you can see what's going on actually when you put it in there's a problem so let's go look at this argument one to is member of must be a n string literal so basically what this is saying is i can't put like a calculation in there i think it actually wants me I'm, i was trying to be smart and it's not worked so let's do this i think it specifically wants a string and there you go so that's a nice little quirk i i, I don't know why that is actually i would assume that would have worked that you can clearly see that i've i've clearly tried this and um i must have forgotten how to work it so now you can see this is valid so this is all good and um now we can just hit apply okay and we're going to check if this user this personal user is part of the data rockstar group and i'm just going to put it next to group name and we should see a false okay and now the key thing here is if i change this to the other user you should see and uh, let's just make sure i click on the right part you've got to click on that arrow very specifically uh, if i select him now you should see that turns to true you can see that I am indeed a data rock star, excuse the pun. So uh, let's go back and you can see that switching and it works. Everything sort of works as expected, which is really, really good. The last couple of functions to check. Let's go ahead, create another calculated field. Let's go to user and uh, all the work we did before was pointless. So basically I can, I can do this one. So let's check is full name and I can go ahead and type my full name. And both of these are going to resolve true because I'm, it's, I use the same name in both instances. So uh, let's just type this out as it was and you can just essentially see that this is working as expected. I'm doing this super fast because, you know, I know how to use Tableau. So this is just sort of normal. But if let's say I misspelled my name and I hit apply, you'll see that that turns to false. So that's a nice way for us to check that it's actually doing what it should be doing. OK, let's hit apply to get that back into the right place. Last but not least, let's duplicate this again because you know me i'm very lazy i say this in every video and it really is true um if i go in here and select user you'll see we've done is full name we've done is member of is username is the last one so let's go ahead and replace this by double clicking that and you'll see that it actually decided to wrap everything around it that's not what i wanted so let's just go ahead and remove this uh, i was trying to be smart again it just failed tim you should just stop being smart um and just close this okay and let's see if this is going to work now username and full name are slightly different so don't forget the username is going to be different in this case so we'll go i have to go ahead and type my email in here and i will just set this to my personal email i'll have to blank this out in the video and hit apply so is full name is there and let's just call this the is username and hit apply and uh, now that we've hit apply you'll see that this has gone over down here and now we can go ahead and grab that and put it at the very end and you'll see the is username uh, on my personal emails is true but if i hit ok and then i switch over to my other account you can see that it then turns false so there you go these are some amazing tableau server functions that you can use inside of your dashboard to do specific things for specific people but the most useful one in my opinion the one that the only one you should really use here is this one group name because essentially what this allows you to do a very sort of good use case is let's say you work in fast moving consumer goods and you have someone in the biscuits team you have someone in the crisps team and you have someone in the cosmetics team people in lots of different teams and what you might decide to do is you might decide to add them to specific groups if i just go if I just exit out of, um, not select everything, oh God, what am I doing here? If I just exit out of that and um, deselect everything, you might actually go ahead and decide 
uh, to create a group for each of those business units because those business units apply across the whole entire organization. And then what you can do is you can actually go in here and write conditional calculations because it's really common in fast moving consumer goods that the biscuit team calculate return on investment on advertising a completely different way to, for example, cosmetics team, because those two different parts of the business might be actually, uh, you know, doing different kinds of promotions and different kinds of financial transactions altogether. So you might have to sort of do conditional calculations for different types of the business, depending on who they are. And essentially you do that for the individual and where they belong. Um, the other way to do it would be a parameter. So you could give the user a parameter to be able to change that. But if you're pretty dead certain about how something's gonna work, then uh, this is sort of one way of doing it. That's probably not the best use case, but just an example of what you could do with this function once you've got it working. So that's pretty much it. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope you've maybe thought of some more interesting ways you could use this. Essentially, all these functions allow you to check a user status on Tableau server on Tableau Online, and then it allows you to do things with them inside of a calculation. So you've got three Boolean functions, is member of, is full name, and is username. And then you've got some other functions which just return information. So group name, username, and domain just return uh, the values to you. Okay. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you in the next video. If you haven't done so already, check out tabletsim.com. Follow me on Twitter and every other place uh, that you might be on social media with. And I'll catch you in the next video.